Everybody loves the Beetle. The classic Beetle is one of the most iconic cars of all time. The Beetle was the longest running and most manufactured single platform car ever. So chances are you know of the Beetle, but the history behind the bug is quite interesting. In the 1930s, Germany had just completed its new road network, so Germany's then councillor, Adolf Hitler, wanted Ferdinand Porsche to design the People's Car. A car that would be cheap, easily mass produced and easy to service. Why? Well, in America, by the 1920s, 33% of the population owned cars. And in the 30s, that number rose to 46%, where in Germany only 2% owned a motor vehicle. So Hitler's plan was to build an inexpensive car that more people would be able to afford and run. So, in 1934, Hitler gave the order to create the Volkswagen Beetle. The car would have a top speed of 100 km per hour, be easy to maintain, be air-cooled, because antifreeze wasn't used by many yet, and it would cost about the same as a motorcycle from that time. Interesting fact, Volkswagen, the, the name of the company, literally means people's car in German. Anyways, but the design of the Beetle is where things get interesting. You see, Ferdinand Porsche claimed he designed the Beetle, but did he? If not, who did? Well, that's a good question. You see, there is two different stories, with two completely different people. So let's start with a man called Joseph Gans. Who was Joseph Gans? Joseph Gans was a Jewish engineer who studied mechanical engineering from 1918 to 1927. During this time, he became inspired with the idea of building a small car that would cost the same as a motorcycle. I've heard that last part somewhere. In 1930, he made the Ardi Gans prototype. Then in 1931, he made, I can't pronounce that word, but it's another prototype. In 1933, the Superior Standard. And in 1934, the second model of the Superior Standard. The Superior Standard was powered by a 400cc two-stroke engine that sat in the rear of the car. And if you look at the design, it does have a few things in common with the Beetle. The engine was also in the rear, like the Beetle, and it was sold for the same price as a motorcycle. All this before the Beetle even existed. But does this mean they stole the design? Okay, so let's break it down. Looks wise, there are similarities, yes. But if you look at the Tatra V570, it also has a similar shape. And the Tatra was released in 1933. And the Tatra also featured a rear mounted boxer engine like the Beetle. Why do I bring this point up? Well, it shows that multiple cars from the same time shared a similar design. Many companies tried to use a modern design that featured a rear engine and a car with an aerodynamic body design. And added to that, manufacturers do get inspiration from other companies and some cars do look similar to others. And that's even the case today. But that doesn't mean they steal the designs. I have to add, though, in May 1933, Joseph Gans was arrested by Gestapo based on falsified charges of blackmail of the automotive industry. He was released and in June 1934 he fled to Liechtenstein, the same month Adolf Hitler assigned the People's Car to Porsche. But I do not believe that Porsche stole his design. They might have been inspired by his design, but there is enough differences between the Beetle and this car for the Beetle to stand on its own. But that's not where the story ends. There is still somebody that can be the father of the Beetle, except for Ferdinand Porsche. Aaron Comenda. Aaron was a Porsche employee, and his job title was Chief of Design. He worked on the Porsche 356, 911, and you guessed it, the Beetle. But here is where the story goes a little dark. On Erwin's deathbed, he left his life's work, literally all his sketches and designs, to Porsche. According to his family, this happened while he was under a diminished state of mind. And so the story goes that after this, Ferdinand Porsche could call himself the father of the Beetle, the 911 and the 356. Erwin's daughter later took VW to court. Her case was that the design and the copyright owner of the Beetle was her father. And because of that, VW owed her family money. The court did recognize the right of Owen's daughter to bring the lawsuit, as Owen Commander had clearly been an employee of Porsche and been involved in the development of the Beetle. But a couple things led the court to decide with Volkswagen. The drawings Commander's daughter brought 
Ford were deemed not to be unique enough to have proven it was entirely his design. The court cited that there was many cars of that era with a similar design, cars like the Tatra V570 and the Mercedes-Benz Type 130. So like I previously mentioned, that was a popular design back then. Now let's talk facts. Porsche don't deny that he worked for them as chief designer, but when any new car gets designed, it's never just one person. You have a whole team of people working on stuff and reporting to the bosses. And this repeats itself till you have a final proposal that gets approved and only after that the build process can start. What is my opinion on this whole story? Ferdinand Porsche called himself the father of the Beetle, the 911 and the 356. I don't think this is the case, because like we discussed, the car is a product of many people working hard, solving problems, while designing a car around the chassis, the engine and the brief. I don't think any of these cars have one father, but rather a few highly skilled designers and engineers. I do feel that Erwin had a lot to do with the final design of the Beetle, especially since he was their chief designer. And that is kind of an obvious assumption to make. What do you think? I'm guessing a bunch of people are going to write me beautiful comments, and you are welcome to disagree. Let's chat, let's see what your opinion is, but in my opinion, it's not just any one person. It's not correct for Porsche to call it entirely their car, but it's not correct for anybody to call it their car. It was a product of a bunch of hardworking people. That's my opinion. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, found it like interesting, maybe, then leave a like, subscribe. I've got many more videos. I've got conspiracy videos as well, like on Stanley Mayer's water car, on the EV1 electric car. I've got a lot of cool stuff there. I've got a build series on my personal car. I've got, I've got a lot of stuff. Just go through it. See if there's something you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?